So in order to understand the controllers that we require, we can just see the already developed application to get an idea of what controllers that we require. So as you can see over here for the EDA customer, we need to have three controllers. One is to create a customer, but in order to create a customer, we also need to know what product ID that we require to create the customer against the customer who is going to buy the product. So we require the product ID for that. And the way that we're going to get the product is by using the get product endpoint. And this get product endpoints is going to be the one which is going to read the data from the data has been stored from the event driven streaming platform, which is the rabbit MQ in our case. And finally, we can also get the list of customers who are available within our platform. So if you see the portal over here, you'll understand that once we click this products, it's going to show me all the different products which is available. And you can also create a customer from the customer portal. But again, they need to select the product from the portal, which are going to be available using the get products endpoint. And then there are going to be all customers, which are going to be the customers who are created within our UI. So we need to create three controllers over here, which is going to perform the intended operation which is literally going to be used by our customer portal over here. That's what we're going to be doing. So let's see how we can design that. So in order to do that, I'm going to go over here to the weather cast controller. So I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to add a new controller over here. I'm going to call this as a customer controller. And this customer controller is going to be calling what is called as a controller base rather the controller itself and i'm going to call this as an api controller something like this and i'm going to call the route as controller which is not bad and i think these are auto generated so i'm going to get rid of that and over here i'm also going to create a constructor where i'm going to call our customer db context that we have created in our earlier lecture which is this one and i'm going to introduce a read only field so as i told you we require three endpoints or three controllers for doing certain operation which is nothing but the get of all the products from the database which is going to be required for us to read all the product details and then also get all the customers and then post all the uh, customers, which is gonna be for creating the customer itself. So let's do all of them one by one over here. So the first one, let's call an HTTP post operation and I'm gonna call a create customer. So I'm gonna do this and I'm not gonna use the I action results for the product and there is a reason for that. And you'll understand what I really mean. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave this guy as it is. And I'm going to say post customer and I'm just going to remove this from body over here, which is all right. And I'm going to say customer DB context dot customers dot add. And I'm going to add the customer over here. And once it is added, I can then say await customer DB context dot save changes. That's it. This is going to be the post operation that I'm doing just for now. And once we introduce the event streaming platform, we will understand what I really mean about sending the saved customer details and performance real actions uh, and changing the logic over here. We'll get back to that later on. Once this endpoint or the controller is there, we also require getting the products as well as getting the customers. So I'm gonna add these details as well. So this is for the customers and for the products. So these are the three controllers that I require for now. So we have all these things in place right now, but now we don't really have any mean to store the data into the database yet so we have to do that first so the way i'm going to do is uh, i'm just going to go to our nuget package over here and i'm going to search for the sql light from the entity framework and now if i just go back to our program.cs file over here you'll notice that we have all the controllers and the services being registered the one thing which I require is adding the DB context. So the way I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here and I'm going to say builder dot services and then dot add DB context. 
and this add db context i'm gonna say customer db context and i'm gonna say options is equal to options dot use sqlite the one that we just installed and then i'm gonna say add data source is equal to customer dot db so this is going to be the one which is going to help me create sqlite db into our project and once it is there i think we are pretty good to go and once we have created the database we also need to ensure that the database is being created and the way i'm going to do it is using var of uh, probably let's call this a scope is equal to app dot services dot create scope so this is very very important for us to be done and then i'm gonna say var db context is equal to scope dot service provider of the get required service and then i'm gonna call the required service as nothing but the customer db context because that is required for us and once we have that we also need to then tell that the db context dot database dot ensure created so this is very very important because if we don't have this then the database is not going to be created for us anytime that's it this is about the creation of the database and also creation of the controller over here so this is what is going to happen so let's try to run this code and see what is even basically going to happen while we run this whole project and once i run that you will notice that it is going to throw me an error here and i think the reason why it's failing is because you can see that i have put the here string over here so let me do that um, and let's try to run the customer api once again you can see that the application is being launched and now you'll notice that we have all the controllers available over here and in fact we can try to create a customer and we can see if that works or not so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove the id and i'm going to name the products customer as karthik and i'm just going to give like an items in cart as 300 if i do execute you can see that it has created the customer for me and when i do the tryout over here you can see that the Karthik has been created for this particular product ID. But we do have a disconnect over here. You can see that we don't really have any product with that particular product ID as you can see. So basically, we are just mimicking as if that this particular product does exist. And there is some problem with this particular product API uh, controller at the moment where it couldn't be able to get the product. This is something that we are going to be solving using the RabbitMQ where we're going to read the data and store into the products model that we created in our earlier video which is over here and then we're going to store it but for now we have a database we have a working controller and we also have a working eda customer in the next lecture we are going to see how we can create a eda inventory and then we start setting up the rabbit mq for the event streaming platform